Today we're going to do something that this is probably one of the very first things that I learned in jQuery when I was first starting to learn JavaScript. And it was how do I actually fix a nav when you've scrolled to it? So this is what we're going to be building here where one, you've got this nav that's just position relative or static. And then as soon as you hit that point where it hits the top of the browser, we're going to make it fix. So the content scrolls underneath. And then we can also do some hot shot stuff like, like scroll out the logo or, or something like that. So first thing we want to do is grab this nav right here. So we're gonna say const nav equals document dot query selector. And we're going to look for the nav with the ID of main. And then we're also going to make a function called fix nav that is then going to run every single page scroll. Awesome. So what this is going to do is we're going to figure out where the bot or the top of this navigation black bar is. Let's say it's 500 pixels from the top. And then when we scroll, we're going to figure out how far are we scrolled? Let's say right here, I'm about 400 pixels scrolled. But as soon as I hit that threshold of scrolling more than the top of the nav is. So as soon as I've scrolled 501 pixels, the nav bar is going to go, oh, I'm off screen. I should now fix myself. So what we need to do on page load is grab wherever the top of this nav actually looks. So we'll say const top of nav is equal to nav 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 dot offset top. Then when you console dot log top of nav, let's just console log that every single time that we run it, open up your dev tools. I recommend putting your dev tools at the side here. Uh, so that won't mess up your top of nav here. You could also update this variable every time that your, uh, your window resizes just so that if somebody does resize or open dev tools, you've got it. So I'm going to scroll here and you see it's 542 pixels. That is the top of the navigation at that point. So what we can then do is we'll say if window dot scroll y why because what is window dot scroll y well let's, let's go back to that top of nav and then we'll also console log window dot scroll y we've done this in a couple tutorials so far now so now you're going to see that the second value one that's how far we've scrolled and then you're going to see that as we get closer and closer to where it's going to hit the top we're just about at that point where the 542 pixels is going to be equal to the 542. And at that point, we want to make that nav fixed. So we're going to go in here and we're say if top of nav is greater or equal to uh, window or other way around. Window dot scroll y is greater or equal to top of nav. If that is true, what we're going to do is we're going to pop a class. And when I do things like this, I like to pop the class on the body just so that I can always target any of the children when we're in the fixed nav state. Some people like to put it on the nav itself, but I found that if I want to target anything else, it's nice to have it nice and high on the body. Document dot body dot class list dot add fixed dash nav. And then we'll say else and we'll just duplicate this, which we're going to remove. Now that's not going to get us all the way there, but if we save that now and refresh now, as you scroll, you'll see this fixed nav is being added and removed, but it's not actually fixing itself. So we need to go over to our style dash start dot CSS and find our nav CSS. And this isn't the greatest CSS because it's using just the uh, element selectors here. It should probably have a class or something like that, but I'm trying to keep it as simple as we can. And I'm going to say when the body has a class of fixed dash nav, the nav itself is going to be position fixed. And then I'm going to put a quick little box shadow on there. So just give it a little bit of a shadow. So when it is in that fixed state, you have a shadow showing that you have some depth there. All right. So now when I hit this point, oh, you see what's happening now? It's it seems to be working, but it seems kind of kind of janky. You see what's going on here? As soon as we hit that little end point there, the, the content jumps up. And, and why is that happening? Well, the, the reason for that happening is because when you make this nav fixed, it is no longer taking up space in the document. You know this from CSS. When you make an element fixed, 
it no longer takes up space. It sort of floats on top of the browser. And by doing that, what's happening is that we cause a reflow on the page. And this site wrap right here, it says, oh, this nav is no longer taking up space. Well, don't mind if I do. And it moves on up the exact amount of space that it gave up, which is uh, however many pixels. So what we need to do is we need to offset that amount by uh, adding some padding to our body. So just as we make it fixed, we need to offset that amount so we don't get this jerky jump right here. So let's go back to our element right here. And we're going to take our document dot body dot style and we're going to set the padding top. And if you have something that is like padding dash top, you cannot do that in JavaScript. So it's camel case. And we're going to set that to be the nav dot offset height. Why? What is that going to give us? If I were to run this in my console here, nav dot offset height is going to give us however large this nav is. And, and I've seen people just like hard code 64 PX, but don't do that because then what happens if your nav changes or your font changes or anything else? And then you're going to be off just a couple pixels. So pr programmatically grab the height of the pixels and then add on PX to the top. And then what we'll also do is on the opposite end, we'll just set the padding top to be zero. Good. So now when, ooh, look at that. So now we've got this nav, 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 normal, 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 and then fixed. And as soon as we hit that point, we don't have that jump anymore. And you can go into your elements panel and take a look at what's going on here. See this style padding top zero. And then as soon as we hit that po point, the class of fixed goes on and then the padding top is 64 PX. Again, why are, you might be asking, why don't I just like put it in here when it has a class of fixed nav, give it padding top of 64 PX. It says we don't know how high this nav is going to be. And I'd rather do it programmatically and do it inline than have to guess and update uh, that every time the nav changes itself. So that's looking pretty good. So that's working great. There's a couple other things that we can do. If you open up your nav, you're going to see that we have an LI with a class of logo. If we look into our style sheet here, you see that I give it a max width of zero and give it an overflow of hidden. So it's there. It's just not being shown at all because it has a width of zero. Then what we're going to do is we're going to say when the body has a class of fixed dash nav, the LI with the class of logo is going to have a max width of something bigger than it will ever be like 500 PX. And I'll show you why in just a second, why we didn't use width in this case. So give that a save. And now watch what happens when we scroll, when we hit that point, Ooh, it slides itself out. Why? Because we have set it to be default zero. And then when you have a max width, of 500, it's going to transition, which is right here. You could set that to be 5px if, if you really like. And then over five seconds, it's going to animate itself in and animate itself out. Now, big quick question. This is a bit of an aside, nothing to do with JavaScript. Why didn't I do width and width auto? And that's because you cannot animate the width of something to be from zero to auto. Um, you do have to use a max width in order to get that transition to kick in here. So nothing brings itself in. Obviously, let's do over half a second instead. Woo! Brings itself in. And then one last thing that I did is if you look at this site wrap, you'll see I've given it a scale of 98%. What we can do here is when the body has a class of fixed nav, the site wrap is going to we'll take our transform. We're going to scale it up to one. So it's just going to go from 98% to one. And we're going to get this little, woo, you see how it sort of brings itself in a little bit effect. I really like these things because all we did there is add one class to the body and then everything else is just taken care of in our CSS. So hopefully you like that. It's really interesting. There's not a lot of code, but Understanding that you need to take care of that extra space when you fix it is really the key to this one. Thanks a lot. I'll see you tomorrow.